What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So a while ago, there were rumors going around that Nintendo and Netflix were actually working together on a couple of different projects, one of which was apparently a Legend of Zelda TV series that may have even been live action. Well, obviously that never happened because we don't have that TV series. And yesterday, some new information came out that may have at least given us a reason as to why it didn't happen. And we'll talk about that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about the Mass Effect Legendary Edition as a ton of new details, a release date, everything. And you know what? This looks a bit better than what I was even expecting with a, a remaster of this series. And we're also gonna be talking about Panic Button's next big Switch project. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to this my channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with PlayStation Now games that are being added for the month of February. It's it's not as hyped up or talked about as Game Pass because Game Pass gets like the uh, first party Microsoft games on the same day that they release to retail. But still, if you're a PlayStation user, you may have looked at this and realized, okay, there are a lot of games that are there and they do continue to add more and more to the subscription-based service. Let's take a look at the games that will be entering PlayStation Now this month, starting with Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Um, I'm unsure why this one is only gonna be available until April 29th, just a couple of months. That's interesting. WW2K Battlegrounds also being added. That will be leaving the service August 2nd. However, the others do not have expiration dates. That includes Detroit Become Human, Darksiders Genesis, Little Nightmares, and Hotline Miami 2 Wrong Number. Looking at this, I have not played WW2K Battlegrounds yet, and this seems like a good opportunity to use PlayStation, uh, PlayStation Now to then download it and try it out, so that's what I'll do. Otherwise though, Darksiders Genesis, I completely recommend if you missed out on it, had a blast when it first released, but not too bad for the month of February with PlayStation Now. Now let's shift gears over to Xbox Game Pass as they announced games for that service for February. Let's start here with the graphic that they put out showing all the different titles and we'll go over the dates. That starts with Ghost of a Tale, Project Winter, and The Falconeer, which I have not played yet. Again, it seems like a good time to try it out, that being February 4th for those three games. And then moving on to February 11th, we'll be getting Final Fantasy 12: The Zodiac Age, Jurassic World Evolution, Stealth Inc. 2, and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Now, the big one I'm looking at there, if you have not played it yet, Final Fantasy 12, certainly. Microsoft said that they're gonna be adding basically all of the Final Fantasy games to Game Pass, and they still have a ways to go considering it was supposed to be done last year, so I think the first half of 2021 is gonna be a lot of, you're basically gonna see a Final Fantasy game in most of these updates going forward. But 12 is good if you have never played a Final Fantasy game, take a look at the catalog there with Game Pass, and I'd recommend picking from like seven, eight, or nine, but really, you can't go wrong with 12 either, it's very good. And if you're a Nintendo 64 owner who is frustrated that you missed out on the Ultra HDMI, which is a board that you put inside the Nintendo 64, then solder it to that motherboard, it gives you HDMI out and it looks really, really good on like a big screen TV through that HDMI connection. Well, it looks like we will have different boards or even updated boards to look forward to here. Here's the website that was posted up and we can see it's the Nintendo 64 digital. The N64 has never looked this good. Digital lag-free HDMI output up to 1080p. Analog RGB, simple firmware update procedure via Wi-Fi. Video filters for de-blur, scan lines, and smoothing, and it will be available April 2021. They have several screens shots there, kind of showing off how it looks. And yes, I have the Ultra HDMI. We did a video here where I installed it into my Nintendo 64 and it makes a massive difference. I mean, really it's night and day. The compatibility is one thing for capturing the video and all this, but it just looks so much clearer because it bypasses all the weird stuff that Nintendo 64 does when it comes to like the um, the, the RCA outputs, the, the standard outputs that you would use, like the yellow, red, and white, it just, it would blur and it would make it look terrible at times. So much better though through the Ultra HDMI. So this one I think is actually gonna be updated and maybe I'll grab this and we'll install it into an N64 at some point on the channel. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Netflix and Nintendo and Zelda and Star Fox. Now, we had heard, which was interesting, it got out there as a rumor that they were gonna be working together to create uh, Zelda and apparently Star Fox as well. But the information that came out yesterday on a podcast was very interesting because it does appear that Nintendo 
actually cancel the project after they got frustrated or annoyed with Netflix for leaking things out there. Let's go over here. This is Adam Conover, who mentions this in a podcast, The Surf Time, saying this probably means nothing to anybody, but it's a story that I feel like I can tell now. In 2015, the, there was this news that Netflix was going to make a Legend of Zelda television show. It was supposed to be a live action show, and it got a lot of coverage in the gaming press. At the same time, I worked at College Humor, and we had a secret project where we were going to make a claymation version of Star Fox with Nintendo. I know this because Shigeru Miyamoto came to our office and I remember that because I asked my boss if I could be in the office that day, he told me no and I'm still mad at him. That's understandable. I, if you have the chance to meet Miyamoto in person, you take it absolutely. Even if that means you gotta go in on a day you're not supposed to be there at work. A month later, suddenly there were reports that Netflix wasn't going to do Legend of Zelda anymore. I was like, what happened? And then I heard from my boss that we weren't going to do Star Fox anymore. I thought that was weird so I asked him what happened. He said, oh, someone at Netflix Netflix leaked the Legend of Zelda thing, Nintendo freaked out. What happened was Netflix leaked this and ended up killing the whole project. Why would you leak something like that? Because you're excited to brag about it, but then the whole project falls apart. Come on, what are you doing? Yeah, that, you know, it would have been interesting to see a live action Legend of Zelda series. I, I don't know. I feel like it would have been better to be like an animated series, kind of like what, what we've seen with Castlevania because that was, that was really good. Oh, live action would have concerned me a bit. And really Nintendo, this is how they do business. You can't go around and brag about how you're working with Nintendo for a Legend of Zelda TV series. That's that's not a good idea, especially if you're under NDA or we'll say an implied NDA, a handshake agreement around this. Nintendo is a very traditional company. And as soon as you do something like break trust there, yeah, they're just gonna say, nah, we're not gonna do it. Like Netflix wanted to work with Nintendo more than probably Nintendo wanted to work with Netflix because there was probably more risk on Nintendo's part because what if the Zelda series was bad or who knows with the Star Fox thing? I, I feel like the Star Fox thing would have been good. It's the, it's looking at that live action Zelda series. I'm, I'm kind of getting the old cartoon vibes again that there could have been a lot of memes coming from that. And uh, anyway, it, it would have been an interesting thing to see, but yeah, if you're working with Nintendo, don't tell people you're working with Nintendo necessarily unless they say you're allowed to. That, why do you think Hideki Kamiya is basically saying, stop asking me about Bayonetta 3 because he can't tell you about Bayonetta 3. Next up, let's talk about Panic Button's next project for the Nintendo Switch. It's coming out in about a month actually, it's Apex Legends. And we knew Apex Legends was coming to the Switch. We were trying to figure out exactly when it was gonna happen. We heard that it might be coming February 2nd. Turns out there was at least an announcement for the game. We can go over to the press release here that was put out saying, today I'm, I'm proud to come to you with some good news. Apex Legends is coming to Nintendo Switch on March 9th, 2021. Porting Apex Legends to its smallest screen yet is a major achievement and we couldn't have done it without our friends at Panic Button. We're very proud of what the team has been able to achieve with some smart optimizations for the Switch port to deliver a full featured Apex Legends experience on the go. Apex Legends will launch on Switch with support for cross-platform play, our latest seasonal content, and full feature parity with the other versions of the game. Plus, since we're launching a few weeks after the start of season eight, Switch players will be granted 30 free levels for the season for their season eight battle pass for the first two weeks after launch. Playing on Switch will also earn you double experience. And it also looks like Power A was getting in on the action here with an Apex Legend enhanced wireless controller that apparently was launching today and it's priced at $50. So. I am now really interested in this Apex Legends port because before we, we heard Apex Legends and I saw a lot of people go, oh, how, how is that gonna run on the Switch? It's a competitive style game and people wanna of course have the best experience possible. But I mean, I think it's interesting to get Apex Legends moved over to the Switch because like, why not? It, it's, it should run. The question is how well will it run? But hearing the panic buttons on the job, yes, I, I'm gonna be checking this one out to see because panic buttons prove themselves as wizards and I mean, they just did Doom Eternal, and now here comes uh, here comes Apex Legends like right away after Doom Eternal came out. So yeah, they're pretty busy over there, and I always look forward to the things they come up with when it comes to getting these impossible ports on the Switch. Seeing something like Warframe, which actually had a serious benefit from Panic Button working on it, as they ended up improving the other versions of the game on like the Xbox and the PC and the PlayStation as well. So hey, look out for Apex Legends on March 9th. It, it's, it is a shame that they couldn't get it ready for the start of, of the season, but them adding in some extra things there along with double experience, trying to get you caught up is at least a nice compromise. Next up, let's talk about the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We, we already knew this was coming. It was a quick teaser announcement that we saw, very, very fast trailer. Uh, but now we have all the information as well as the release date. And I have to say, 
This is more than I thought they were gonna do with the collection. I am very happy to see it because I'm a big fan of the original Mass Effects. Well, Mass Effect 1 and 2, 3, the, the ending, you know, the, yeah, that whole thing. But like, I mean, come on. 1 and 2, especially 2, are just absolute classics. And it looks like it is getting the treatment that they deserve. Let's go over here to uh, the page that was put up as well as several different screenshots, a full trailer, comparisons, the whole thing. This game is coming out May 14th. Now, it is coming out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox, and PC. Backwards compatibility will be in full effect for the PS5 and the series uh, Xbox Series systems where they will retain a higher frame rate. It'll be overall smoother. I'm sure the resolution will maintain its, its 4K much better, all of those different things. And they have not ruled out a Switch port yet. And from what I heard, the Switch port would probably end up being delayed. I do believe it is coming to the Switch at some point in time. Really, they should do that anyway because if you remember back in the day, they released the Mass Effect trilogy on like the 360 and the PS3 on like the same day or around the same time that they just put Mass Effect 3 on the Wii U at full price. So, I, you know, that might not be a bad way to make things up there. Now, looking at their site here, they say the Mass Effect Legend Edition includes single player based content and over 40 DLC from the highly acclaimed Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, and Mass Effect 3 games, including promo weapons, armors, and packs remastered and optimized for 4K Ultra HD. Now they did say that they had to make a decision, do they include multiplayer for like Mass Effect 3 in this trilogy, or do they go back and spend the time just really fixing up the game, making it look much more modern and better for what we expect out of our systems now. Turns out they decided to go the single player route, and I think based on what I'm seeing here with these screenshots and all of this, they made the right decision. I'll have to see more obviously when, when we get it in May, but from what they've shown with the comparison shots and talked about with doing things like going in and upscaling the different textures to make everything look really, really nice on our big screen TVs now, yeah, I'm okay with that one. Unfortunately, they also said they didn't mess around with anything when it comes to the ending for Mass Effect 3, so I'm sure we'll live through that controversy once again. Oh, and they also introduced this Mass Effect Legendary cache, but it, uh, it doesn't have the game in it. I, I think that's something they've done before a couple of times with different games. It's just everything but the game itself. I mean, it has a really cool one-to-one uh, -one scale replica helmet and a steel case for the game that it doesn't come with. Either way, it's exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to going back through the three different Mass Effect games all over again. And I just gotta figure out what I'm gonna grab it for, whether it's the PS5 or the Xbox, or I go back through it on the PC because they even added controller support, even for the PC. A lot of stuff went into this and it really does sound like it's getting closer and closer to almost a remake as opposed to just a basic remaster. So good stuff there. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a series that does appear to be returning from EA. It's something that a lot of sports fans have been hoping would come back. It's been missing since 2014 when we had NCAA college football then. Here we go with the tweet from EA saying, for those who never stopped believing, college football is coming back with a little EA Sports there, college football, hashtag EA Sports, college football. It, like I said, it's been a little while. And I know back when I, I would work at the different stores and sell games, people would come in and they really wanted the NCAA football game. Sometimes more so than Madden even. I know a lot of times the NCAA football game would come out in like July and then Madden would come out in like August or September and you would be able to take characters from NCAA football going through college and then put them into Madden. And I assume all of that will happen here too, but it's just the overall play style and mechanics were different and people really liked NCAA football over Madden at times. So it's really cool to see this. And I almost wonder if there will be some internal competition maybe even. That's the one thing that we haven't had from EA when it comes to football games is competition at all. And I, I kind of feel like, hey, if you have one team on NCAA football and the other team on Madden, maybe they would compete a bit internally there against each other. But hey, really cool to see this. Not sure if this means that next year, I know there are a lot of things they have to work out, whether it's with different students and, and the whole thing there with the uh, the NCAA to figure out how payments, all that stuff works. But um, it's good to see. And I, I don't know, maybe NCAA 2022 then we can look forward to. And before we take a look at the comment of the day, let's take a look at the poll that I put up yesterday where I asked, will Stadium make it to the end of 2021? I was just curious to see what people would go with here. And yeah, out of 34,000, votes or so, 79% of people said no, 21% said yes. After looking through the subreddit for Stadia yesterday, uh, confidence was heavily shaken <laughs> after that announcement from Google, and, and rightfully so, because they just got rid of their first party studios almost on a whim, it felt like, or just things weren't working out. I mean, again, who knows how bad those games really were, but they seem to base a lot of it on the success of a third party game like Cyberpunk, 
on their service, which is weird because that's like if, if Sony was like, wow, look at all these Red Dead Redemption 2s that sold. We're gonna go close down Sony Santa Monica now. It's it's an odd thing to pivot that quickly about a year or so into the service's life, but here we are. Hey, you know what? I'm kind of siding with the idea of it probably won't be talked about much by the end of 2021 because Google will kind of forget about it, but who knows, maybe they got some other plans. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Infinity Master saying, glad that Google is stepping away from the idea of game development because I always fear that they will end up buying other popular game studios and then making those games exclusive to their own platform. Just imagine the idea of Sega or Square games being exclusive to Google Stadia, the horror, yeah. So the way I see it with Google Stadia, what they can still do and basically still kind of stick to what what they're trying to do here, that being not having any studios like internal they have to manage, is they pay a Sega or they pay a Square to make a game, like basically contract out to them or platinum games even, and then they just keep it exclusive to Stadia. That's something they still could do here because while, while Google I think is pulling away a bit from Stadia and they don't really wanna spend that much more money on it, it could still be one Hail Mary that they try. Okay, Platinum, let's give you enough budget and capital here to make a game for us in the Platinum game style that we will keep on Stadia and just see if it works. And then if it does, then yeah, maybe they go to Sega, maybe they do go to Square and they try to keep getting games created without actually having to manage studios. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Well, there's Netflix and Nintendo. Nintendo just canceling outright the projects around a live action Zelda uh, series. You know, it is a shame because I would have been curious to see how that even would have turned out and would it affected the series leading up to something like Breath of the Wild. Let me know what you think about that whole thing. And then also Apex, Legends heading to the Switch now in March with Panic Button doing the port. Are you more interested now in the game because Panic Button is doing that port? Let me know about that one. And then what do you think about the Mass Effect Legendary Edition? I think it looks awesome and I can't wait for it to come out in May. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.